Shira and Tom Stafford are all set to go chasing a rocket through space today. Shira says the last 50 feet of hooking up to an Agena rocket shouldn't be any problem. It's that first 103,000 miles. The story of the countdown, the prospects, and the mission from Mike Wallace. Today is one of the most important days in United States space history. For today, for the first time, two vehicles. This one, the Gemini 6 spacecraft with two men aboard. This one, the Agena unmanned vehicle, will join together in space for the first time and become one space vehicle. The process known as rendezvous and docking, and it is a crucial step in man's journey to the moon. In fact, today's flight has been called the single most important flight in the whole United States space program to date. This morning at 11 o'clock, the Atlas Agena will roar off pad 14 down at Cape Kennedy. One hour and 41 minutes later, the Gemini 6 spacecraft, Wally Shira and Tom Stafford aboard will come off pad 19. For a progress report on preparations, CBS News correspondent Charles Von Fremd at the Cape. Mike, that magic word, go, is the word here this morning. And as you know, that means that uh, everything is ready. Out there is pad 19 with a Titan II booster rocket and the two-man Gemini spacecraft ready for test pilots. One is the oldest of the astronauts, a fellow named Wally Shira, aged 42. The other is a 35-year-old Tom Stafford. 6,000 feet away from pad 19, which you're looking at right now, is pad 14 with the Atlas booster rocket and the target for the GT-6 crew, an unmanned Agena spacecraft. The countdown is rattling right along, right on time, right on schedule. And it calls for an Agena liftoff before noon, Eastern Daylight Time, some 101 minutes before Shira and Stafford go up to chase and dock with it. The Astros are still sleeping, we're told, right now, but they'll be awakened within the hour and then have breakfast. Everything looks good. The boosters, the spacecraft, the pilots, and even the weather are cooperating for a historic effort later today. Charles Von Fram, CBS News at Cape Kennedy. Today's rendezvous and docking maneuver is an infinitely complicated one. Two space vehicles launched one hour and 40 minutes apart and flying in separate orbits around the Earth must first of all find each other and then move toward each other and finally link up and lock together. For an understanding of how this will be done, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration has put together an animation. If all goes as planned, a Gina will be placed into a circular orbit 185 miles above the Earth. Astronauts Shira and Stafford in the Gemini 6 will be in an orbit whose low point, the perigee, is 100 miles, whose high point, the apogee, 168 miles. Like a racehorse on the inside rail, Gemini, because of its smaller orbit, begins to catch up on the Agena. And then at apogee, on the second revolution, Wally Shira will fire his aft thrusters. He will thus increase his speed by 36 and a half miles an hour. This will raise the perigee by 34 miles, making the orbit somewhat more circular. It will now have a high point, an apogee of 168 miles, the same as before, but a low point of 134 miles. And that also slows down the catch-up rate of the Gemini 6. But Agena and Gemini 6 may not be in the same plane. And so to correct this, Shira has to perform what is called an out-of-plane maneuver. He fires his attitude thrusters to rotate the spacecraft at right angles to his forward direction. At the point where Gemini's orbital plane intersects Agena, Shira fires his thrusters, and thus the Gemini is now in the same plane. About three and a half hours after launch, the Gemini 6 is 230 miles behind the Agena, but the Gemini now has radar contact. On the third revolution, Shira fires his thrusters, increasing his speed by about 35 and a half miles an hour. So he has now raised the low point to where it equals the high point, 168 miles high. It is now 17 miles below Agena. About five hours after launch, on the dark side of the Earth and using radar, Shira points the Gemini's nose toward Agena. He sees Agena's two flashing lights against a background of stars, fires his thrusters again, increases his speed by about 22 miles an hour. And thus, he puts the Gemini 6 on an intercept course. Now, Shira makes two small velocity changes along through here, 
and he winds up putting the Gemini slightly ahead of the Agena, its nose facing the target. And finally, using sight as well as radar, Chirac accomplishes the final velocity maneuver for successful rendezvous. He fires his thrusters as a break to make his speed equal the Agena's speed. Both are in the same orbit, and Chirac is now in position for his docking. He nudges his ship with small thrust pulses toward the interior of the lighted cone. If all goes well, Shara should have gently moved into position where the latches lock both vehicles into a rigid position, and thus docking has been accomplished. History will also be made at the end of this Gemini 6 flight during recovery, not space history, but television history, and I'll have that story in a moment. when things go smash, fix them for good with these two great silicone products from Dow Corning. At the end of the flight of Gemini 6, for the first time, live television pictures will be beamed from the deck of a recovery ship, this time the carrier Wasp. They will hit the early bird communications satellite 22,000 miles up. They'll flash back down to the ComSat ground station at Andover, Maine, from there along landlines to New York and out across the television networks where they'll be seen immediately across the country, a journey of something more than 50,000 miles in less than half a second. The pool correspondent aboard the carrier Wasp, which is now already in recovery position downrange, east of Cape Kennedy, southwest of Bermuda, is Bill Ryan, and here is his report. Aboard the USS Wasp will not be looking when astronaut Shara and Stafford land in the southwest Atlantic at the end of the flight of Gemini 6. The eye is a 33,000-pound dish, a massive antenna mounted on the starboard side of the Wasp's flight deck just aft of the carrier's island. The giant antenna will be looking far into space, well beyond the area where Shara and Stafford are expected to spend two days. The antenna will be looking for early bird satellite, as it has found it now. And then it will have the first live pictures ever to be transmitted from a downrange ship while astronauts and the spacecraft are being recovered. A radio and television signal of massive strength will be sent to the satellite, which will relay it to a drum station in Andover, Maine. From there, the transmission becomes relatively simple and routine. If anything, this operation can be called simple and routine. The antenna is designed to lock on to the satellite, again as it has now, and much as radar locks on to an aircraft when it's guiding it in for a landing at an airport during bad weather. In an area where everything from the onboard airplanes to the people who fly and maintain them is given a nickname, the big dish has not been neglected. Some personnel aboard the carrier designated CVS-18 are referring to the antenna as the big umbrella. This is Bill Ryan aboard the USS Wasp. The man who has been the CBS News guide from the very beginning of the United States space program is veteran space reporter Walter Cronkite. He will be our anchor man again during the flight of Gemini 6. He is getting ready now at his anchor desk here at the CBS News Space Center. Walter? Well, Mike, uh, I think we've now reached the point in our space effort where we know that man can get to the moon and back without uh, serious ill effects. Uh, Gemini 5, our eight-day space flight just two months ago, seemed to prove that beyond any serious doubt. We know that man can do it. We now have to concentrate on the mechanics of getting him there. And that's what this flight today is all about. Essential to our hopes of landing a man on the moon is the rendezvous and docking that uh, the United States is trying for today. Now, nobody has ever carried out a successful rendezvous in space. That's a meeting up and a linking up of two vehicles in space. The Russians have tried it uh, at least once, as far as we know. Uh, they never got uh, closer than uh, three miles, but they did not have the maneuver capability that we now have built into our sophisticated space vehicles. We tried uh, primitive methods of a rendezvous in uh, the flights of Gemini 4 and 5, and as you know, we had to give them up uh, each time. On both of those flights, however, we did learn a very great deal about it. Now, with this Gemini 6, just a two-day flight, we're concentrating on bringing it off. That's the sole purpose of this mission. We think we can, but we won't know for sure whether this is a feasible method 
for getting man to the moon until Gemini 6 is over. If it fails, our space program could suffer a serious setback. Wally Shira has said our moon program would be stalled if he fails today. If it is a success, then we know we're on our way. Mike? One final note, CBS News coverage of Gemini 6 will include live descriptions of both of today's launches and of course all major developments throughout the flight for the first launch of the Atlas Agena. We'll begin live coverage from Cape Kennedy five minutes before liftoff at 10.55 this morning Eastern Time. We'll return to the Cape at noon, 40 minutes before the launch of Gemini 6 with astronaut Sharon Stafford. However, in the event of important developments down at the Cape, or at Mission Control in Houston, in the Gemini spacecraft, or aboard the Agena, developments which warrant your attention will interrupt our regular programming with this signal called a space alert. When you hear that sound and see that symbol, you will know that about 10 seconds from that time, we'll broadcast a special report from the CBS News Space Center. Our next scheduled report, five minutes before the Atlas Agena lifts off from Pad 14 down at the Cape, that is at five minutes before 11 daylight time. From the CBS News Space Center in New York, here is Walter Cronkite. At Cape Kennedy, astronauts Walter Schirra and Tom Stafford should be getting up just about this moment for this important day in space. The count for their Gemini 6 rendezvous mission stands at T minus 274 minutes. That's four minutes and 30, or four hours and 35 minutes and counting. The Agena, their rendezvous target vehicle, is 179 minutes away from blastoff, now scheduled for 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The fueling of the Atlas Agena began about 10 minutes ago. The weather at the Cape is fine. The countdown, there are 11 separate ones for this complicated flight, where they're all proceeding uneventfully at the moment. We'll have CBS News GT6 reports every hour and every half hour, and watch your screen for this sign, a CBS News alert, which means we are interrupting regular programming for important space development.